What's up guys and welcome to a brand new episode on the Drift Games YouTube channel. Welcome back to the vlog. We've got a special one today because we have got a brand new car, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory on why we have a new car. So since I was about 20, 21 years of age, I've been kind of owning a lot of different JDM cars. I've had Evos, Subarus, Skylines, 32s, 33s, 34s, S2000s, the list goes on. I've pretty much had whatever kind of JDM import I wanted, bar the super, super stuff, like the NSXs or the Supers, but all the stuff that was quite affordable, I've had, I've owned, I've swapped, I've changed, I've modified. And there's one chassis that I kept coming back to over and over and over again, which was an S-Body. Now I have two S-Body 180SX drift cars, but the problem with drift cars is they're very restricted. You can only use them when there's a track day on, you can only use them when there's a drift day, and as with all drift cars, they're kind of broken all the time. So I wanted something that I could drive at the weekends or every day that was an S-Body. So I had a look around, and as you guys know, the price of JDM cars now has just gone through the roof. So you've really got to keep an eye on it. One car in particular popped up and it seemed a bit too good to be true. So I jumped on the chance, got on the phone five minutes after the ad went up, saw the guy that evening, checked over the car. It has some issues, which we're going to get to in a moment, but I'm really happy with the purchase. I got a really good deal on it and it is right here beside me. It's the latest car to jump into the Drift Games garage. It is this Nissan S14 Zenki. The 1994 model and on the outside it's super clean there's no rust there's a japanese shell it's a kind of a pearl white at the moment it has a 270 or body kit on it it's actually an original 270 or body kit on it it's running some war promotion wheels uh, but that isn't the reason that i was really attracted to the car in the first place if you look on the inside and we can go through it in a bit when we get inside it's pretty basic Got the standard seats in there, there's a couple of rips and holes and a few bits missing. You know, nothing too exciting in there. But the exciting part is here. So, what do you think? SR20, big turbo, small turbo? Well, you'd be wrong. Because this car, strangely enough, is actually running a full RB25 conversion, which is a really, really nice conversion. So, this actually runs an RB25, it's got a Greddy intake front mount intercooler, bigger turbo, all that kind of good stuff. Very nice and tidy conversion. And also running a RB25 gearbox, custom prop, and a limited slip differential on the back. So pretty much an S14 jumped up a little bit now that it's a six cylinder. Now, that's all the good news and it all seems pretty awesome, but the car has some issues. And with every car you buy, you sort of have to buy it as seen and figure them out. So what we're gonna do now is drive it over to Wayne's, get it up on the ramp, and get a good look through this car because when you're buying it, you know, you're not up on the ramp, you're not taking a huge amount of time just to check the basics on it. But it has got a misfire, it has some hesitation. Not sure what the issue is, we kind of took a punt on it. So let's hope that punt has paid off when we get it up on the ramp. Okay, so I love this part about buying cars because it's almost like a little mystery because you're trying to find out what's actually done to the car. So this is not a stock. 94 Sylvia S14. It's had a lot of modifications over the years. So whether they've been good or bad or what's still good or what needs to be replaced, that's what we're going to try and figure out here. So you guys are along for the ride. I haven't really looked through the whole car. But I'm going to give a little bit more detail on what's on the outside. We mentioned it's got a 270 or kit. That's a plastic kit. So I think that actually is stamped by Nismo. So that's pretty interesting. It's got a D-Max uh, rear window spoiler and then it's got this rear spoiler, which I think is a Nismo part, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty clean on the back, all that looks good, but a massive exhaust on the back, so I'm starting to think uh, that might be a straight pipe, which means NCTs or the, well, the test we have to do to make it roadworthy every year in Ireland, and we might have to do some work with it on that. But in that, we've got work emotions, we're gonna try and check the offsets on those. It has a mirror missing, which I think is here. Yeah, that's, so that, that's, I don't even think this is for this. No, that is not for, so I've got this one, which is broken, which I think is for, yeah, that's for it. And then I've got a replacement, which is just not for it, so that's definitely got to be sorted out. Uh, let's have a look inside. OMP steering wheel, I'm not sure that's a real OMP steering wheel, it looks like there's a sticker put on there. Um, it's, got a, it's got Bluetooth, 
It's got a USB, which is pretty handy because it's a road car. It's got a Spitfire gauge for boost, which looks like it's from 1962. It's a bit crude, I would that say. That is a bit crude now, so I'm not... Just a, slapped onto the dash. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Dash is cracked uh, here, but it's not too bad. They do crack in a lot of these in the sun. So you would never see that. No, it's a very clean crack, so it's actually not too bad. Then aftermarket gear, uh, gear knob. Other than that, it's kind of stock enough inside. Maybe we'll go down and look up at the car and see. So on the outside, clean body. Doesn't look like there's too much rust on the arches. The back arches have been rolled already. Okay, I guess. Um, it's sitting really high for some reason, so there might be a reason for that, that someone just has no style, or there's a reason that it's sitting up that high is there's a problem. It's running okay, and we'll get to that in a minute about what the running issues are. That's more of a Wayne sort of area that we're gonna have to look at, but I think we'll get down into the pit and we'll try and just see what's underneath. The underneath is gonna tell us a bigger story if there's worse for us problems, if we've got issues and stuff, so let's see. So I'm just about to go down and inspect the car. Mikey's here, and Adam's here. So I bought another car, Mike. It's an SR. It's not an SR. We've broken a lot of them. Really? We now have a brand new engine 3 to break. 14 It's a 3 to 8 it's actually a 318 M52. <laughs> <laughs> what's that engine? Go on, what's in it? I don't need to know. I can't believe you bought another one. We'll see that, it's an RB25. So it's Ooh, an actual you're decent, decent engine. You there. don't buy anything that's good though, so I'm confused now. Maybe I'm turning the leaf that I'm buying something that, well. Okay, new year, right. new day. Give me 30 seconds under the car. Yeah, I'll, I'll be able to tell you if it's good or not. So I'm going to go and see if all of the outside is fine, but does, is there real problems underneath? So that's, we don't know. We haven't been under the car. I'll say so. you go, Mike, so you can actually say. He doesn't want me to go. Ah, I'm just telling the truth. Suspension. Ah. <laughs> arms. Ha, ha, has poor suspension. Yeah. Wheels. This light's dying, Josh. I need another light. We want to take a minute just to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, MTech Brakes. They're one of the UK's leading supplier of performance brake pads, discs, and hoses. We have run them on all of our cars. They're an amazing product and at an amazing price. So make sure you check out their full range at mtechbrakes.com. So we're going to go, let's go good to bad, bad to good. Okay, chassis legs, they look straight. That's a good start. Has them. It has them. And they're Do you know straight. what? The 180 only has half one, so at least this has two it's, full ones. We're, we're way ahead of the car. Dave, what is this coming down here? This, uh, this is breather pipe. a breather pipe. Anything I think. that's loose is a breather but pipe. But why is it so low? That's not a um, good thing. Stance. No, he bought car, that off Alex Law. The and that's car why it's so clearly low. doesn't have any stance, so I don't know why that. <laughs> We've had a coolant uh, explosion here at one point, or some sort of water explosion, so it's all over the chassis legs. We can clean that up. I don't know what this is. What's this rubber bit? It's like a protector. See, the thing is, this that could be standard. Like, look at that. Is There's a Nissan part number there. Yeah, that is so, like that. I'd say that's standard. Like. That's the wheel well. well. We have it on both sides. So that's that's the wheel side. well? Has that just been cut or something? What do you do? Pump water and get wheels yeah, out of it? It's like where the, the mode guard was, but it's just, that's where it finished. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, it comes down to here. Jeez, but it's added. cut out because of the, well, the intercooler pipes. The intercooler pipes is why it's cut out. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well done. Wiring is. Wiring? Fuck you, bro. Why is there? We know it's there, so. Solid mountain engine. There's why is. That's when you power steering fluid. So yeah, we power steering fluid. Fuck gearbox is in it, Dave. Or B25 gearbox, as far as I know. Is it a straight through exhaust? It is an absolutely straight through exhaust. So that is not going to. Oh, but we Wait have a, a spot. Hang on a second. This isn't going on track, so it doesn't have to be under 105, technically. But it has to have an NCT emissions. Ah, be grand with that. Well, actually, awesome. do you know what? It's not a custom exhaust. This is a this is an exhaust for an S14, I think, that they've chopped here. See this bit of juicy welding here? I was going to say, there's a bit of debatable welding. Debatable out, welding. Call it. That is the issue there, I think, is what they've done. But this means that I could find a catalytic converter and put it into this spot here, which means we might pass an old NCT. Custom prop. Actually, it's two-piece prop, which is quite nice. Like to do, yeah. And then we have it into the rear differential. We don't know what that could be. I think I that's think probably an S. Standard. I, it could be a standard or LSD. We don't I can't know. actually really see. If we We'd have to do an old uh, test to How see. How could if we test that? I, I, I have my ways. I've my ways. That I actually can qualify the test. Um, <laughs> It actually doesn't look too it's rusty. Clean. It's, it's clean. clean. There's For a few little things, but it's not like here is probably the worst. But that's not even too bad. Get me the screwdriver. I was going to say, I've seen, don't get a screwdriver. Get the screwdriver. No, 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 no. You have to know, lads. Yeah, so that, that to me is probably the worst bit of rust on it. Yeah. Oh, no, we have uh, that one's bad, but I think that is worse now, in fairness. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> oh, look over this side now. we got four corners. The it's, four it's, corners it's are basically, rust. It's basically where it was being jacked. Yeah. It still has metal. metal. It's not bad. It's basically wherever it was being jacked, it's got a bit of bend in it. He's bought worse. He I, has I bought, have worse. bought worse. Have you seen the Caprice? <laughs> <laughs> at least we have, the, the Caprice is the canary in the mine, and at least no matter what car I buy, you <laughs> So obviously it looks like every time it was Jack, that's pretty much what's happening yeah. there. A lot of stock stuff still in it, Mike, uh, yeah. all the stock it's brakes. A standard car, man, that's what I like. Yeah, and it's got, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll take that as a, as a victory that it's not horrendous. The shocks on the back. 
You can't see that one. You can see that one up through there, but yeah, that looks like it's absolutely in And this one doesn't look much better. So I think it's going to need a brand new set of coilovers, which can be done. And brand new set of coilovers, fit a catalytic converter, a couple of bulbs, a mirror, and stop it running like a bag of cats. And we should have a very good road car, I think. So let's get out of here and go back up and start making a plan on what we are going to do to this car. Actually it works. Yeah. I don't think you're at 3,000 revs there. Not at all. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take the car for a small spin down the road and just see what that problem is. Just, I don't think we'll diagnose it, but I'm just gonna show you guys what that problem is, so. So you can feel it straight away there. It just hesitates. It feels like the boost isn't coming it's, up. Yeah, it's just pulling itself back or it's holding itself back all the time. So, and the front end is super twitchy, which this body shouldn't be. So I think that could be an alignment problem at the front. It's just like really like moving like this across the road. So I think that's an alignment issue. That's easily solved. The power issue smells rich, which to me would indicate that it's just not boosting right or fueling right or something isn't right. Uh, I just got passed by a Volvo. Oh my god! Yeah, it's chancy man. If you're driving along normally, it actually drives okay. It bars a twitchy front end. There's nothing too major I would say is a problem with that. But when I put the foot down, it gets this hesitation and it's kind of coming and going with power and it's very unpredictable. So that is an issue. I'm not going to drive the car too hard here obviously because it's not running right. But it doesn't seem to me like there's a major problem with the engine. It, like it's not knocking, it's not making big bangs, it's not doing anything too. It seems like a boost issue to me. And that could be a case of a pipe coming off, it could be a boost leak, it could be anything. So we're going to get Wayne to diagnose that between this episode and the next episode to make sure we know what it is. So in the next episode, we'll be able to tell you guys if I'm right and it's a small issue or it's a bigger issue. So we don't know that just yet. What is with the indicator stuff? Ah, uh, that's not, that's the wipers. The wipers don't work. I was all listen, the listen, way. Listen, listen, listen. Something's moving, but those wipers ain't moving. So that's another, <laughs> put that on the list. It's definitely got a diff in it anyway. It kicks in. It kicks in. It's just that mid-range. It just has nothing. And to be honest with you, for an RB25, it should have a little bit more of a linear pull than that. A little bit more torque. So it's holding itself back somehow. It's driving. It's idling. But you can even feel it into gear there. It just takes a second to know what's going on. So I'm not sure what that is or what the problem is. But it's one of those things where I think we'll diagnose it. I mean, we've had these issues at the track before with other S bodies we've had and other cars. So. I don't think it's going to be something major. This car runs a Mines ECU, so it actually came with the engine conversion when it was originally done. So it should be mapped pretty okay for the engine conversion. To me, it doesn't seem like a map issue. It seems like a something fueling or boost, I think, something like that. So we'll, we'll have a good look at it. Wayne will have a good look through the engine and see what it is. And I said I can't show you much more performance than that, guys, because it isn't running right. But you know what? That's part of buying cars. You, you have to go through all the puzzle and find out what's good and bad. And, Hopefully we can find out very quickly what it is and get this car actually on the road, running and performing smoothly. So you bought the car not knowing the problem? No, but I also got a good deal on the car because the guy selling the car didn't know the problem. So, so, I <laughs> so took, you took a punt I took a gamble on it, I took a gamble on it. Now that gamble might pay off and that gamble might not pay off. But um, yeah, hard to know. I'd say it's definitely down to the no boost control. Could be. Like, you're just, you're coming straight off your... I mean, you rev it. Gets on that. Just give it I love the sound of our bass! It, it revs all the it's way It's unbelievable! <laughs> oh my god, that sounds amazing! So let's go uh, park the car back in the garage and make a plan of what we're going to do next. Okay, so we've had the car out on the road, we checked it on the ramp, we've given you guys a kind of an overview. Now's the fun part. We're going to start talking, Mike, about what we're going to do to it to make it the way I want it. We're going to leave it alone. The way it is, that's it. It's done. Park with the rest. Or, okay, yeah. or, so the idea is that for the two road cars that I want to sort of have as sort of the 2000s era or even yeah. before, classic period correct cars. So this is one and the Corolla is another. Now you've introduced the Corolla in a couple of episodes ago. We are doing like a period correct, very subtle modification just to make it look the way I want it. That'll be in a future episode. But for this one, I think we've got a list, two lists. We've got one list, which is 
making it look better and we have one list of making it run better. So the run better part, I can do nothing with because I don't know what it is. So what we need to do is we need to get a wing mirror for it, we need to get the engine running properly, we need to just check out what's going tidy on, up. tidy it up essentially, make the car run as good as it looks. Yeah. The ex exterior of the car, we're going to go with the usual, we're going to go with JDM wheels, as blingy as we can. Uh, we are on stock arches, so we're going to try and make the best use of that. We're going to change the body kit, we're going to do something a little bit more aggressive, and then we're going to change all of the coilovers. That's not a huge amount of... I would say a massive amount of transformation, but on this car, it will really change the look of the car. So we're going to go lower, we're going to go wider, and we're going to go with a new kit that makes it look a little bit more aggressive. So that's coming up on the next episode, so make sure you tune in. If you enjoyed it, that's how much you get the car. There's not many of these around anymore, especially... It's rare. A Zenki S14, not many with an RB25. What do you think? Should it be an SR? Should it be RB25? Would you drive this car? What would you do to it? I, again, we'll let you guys in the comments discuss. What would you do with this car? I'm doing wheels. I'm doing coilovers and I'm doing a body kit, but which three of those would you choose? What type of body kit, what type of wheels, what type of coilovers, you let us know. And maybe I might change my mind in the meantime because we're putting these videos out over the next couple of days so you can see the transformation. So Mike is gonna get the new body kit, yep. get it painted, get it fitted, tidy up the car here and there, give it a buff, give it a polish. We'll have a look through. Wayne is gonna go do through all the, the messy bits, which is all that's, the, his that's his department of seeing what's right and wrong with it mechanically. And then I'm gonna go buy all the shiny things like a magpie on the internet and put them on top of that. So that's kind of how we work as a Power Rangers trio of transforming this car. So over the next two episodes, we're gonna transform this car from what you see now to a pretty cool street weapon, Orbi 25 powered S14. So let us know in the comments what you think. See you on the next episode.